Uh, welcome, Magic Makers. This is Destiny here. And today on Magical Monday, I wanted to talk about um, having crabs. And I'm sure a number of you looked at the title and you were like, what? Um, and no, I don't mean those crabs. I mean a different type of crab. These are crabs that you know in your life. Um, you know them pretty well, probably. And they are people that pull you down or hold you back. So like when you've got all this amazing momentum and you're really kicking it and you're really ready to go and you're ready to explode and, and go forth and conquer, they're the ones that go, mm -mm, nope, come back here. You're going too far. I don't want you to go there. Um, much like regular crabs. I grew up in Hawaii and we used to collect crabs on the beach in like little buckets. And if you ever watch them, they like start to climb on top of each other and like kick each other down into the bucket uh, to get further up. And so this is the type of crab that I'm talking about today. So these people, um, I've had a lot of them in my life, but what's interesting is that they kind of would come and go. So they would, there would be like one that would last, you know, a couple of months and then another one that, you know, maybe a couple of years later, there'd be another one. So it was never like a constant stream of crabs, but I wanted to give you some examples of what a crab looks like so that you are aware of the fact that you've got them. All right. So one of them is, so I had a really um, interesting boss when I used to work in the corporate world and we'd have these weekly meetings and um, it was it was meant to be like kind of goal setting sort of and and like how far did you go how far did you get what could you work on but what I noticed was that there was zero accountability and so this person is definitely a crab because they're unwilling to call you on your stuff right and so like let's say we would set a goal for 10 new clients or something like that and we'd hit nine that's not too shabby all right you know that's 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 a good deal but then the next week we'd hit eight then seven, then six, then five. And pretty soon it was like, well, if we're not going to be held accountable to anything and there are no consequences to what we're doing, why are we even doing this? Right. Does that make sense? So there's zero accountability. The next one is someone that um, seems like your best friend, but they keep shooting down all of your ideas like over and over and they won't even like let you test them out right? Like you come up with this really amazing idea. You haven't heard of anybody that's doing it, which by the way is definitely your magic. Uh, and, and like they want you to go and buy someone's program that's going to tell you to, I don't know, a 12 step emailing process. Now there's nothing wrong with a 12 step emailing process. What I'm saying is like, if that's not your inherent thing that you love to do and you don't even like email, why are you doing it? But this person being your best friend is going to go and suggest that you look in all of these other areas instead of doing the thing that's your idea that you really love and really want to do. Um, and usually it's, they, they mean well, right? Like they, they want to protect you and they want to keep you safe. However, not helpful at all. Um, this next batch is usually someone close, much like your best friend, like the one I just mentioned, uh, but it can also include your family members. Um, a lot of times when we share our excitement about starting something new or wanting to try something new, we want to share it with the people that we love the most, right? And that's our friends and our family. And sometimes they inject their fears or they inject their concerns onto you and they project it onto you. So if they have a fear of not being good enough or like a fear of rejection, then that's what's going to come out of them and it's gonna like weigh you down. And that's what a crab really does, is they just like pull you down and weigh you down and it just feels so heavy to be around them, right? Um, it could also be a crab that reminds you, well, that didn't work the last time. And the last time they tried it was like 20 years ago. Like, it's 20 years later. Could we maybe give it another shot? Right. So be on the look, the lookout and listen to hear if you've ever known of somebody that has done that, because a lot of times like, yes, it may be true that it, they, they, it something happened the last time and it didn't work and something blew up. But there's so many more things that you can take into consideration for yourself. Um, the last crab that I can describe. Oh, man, like this one's always fun for me because I hear it a lot in my coaching um, and it's quickly nipped in the bud, <laughs> by the way. It's when somebody complains about the same thing for a really, really, really long time. 
like you know this person you I know you know them okay and so this is the person that like you almost want to ask them do you want to keep complaining about it or do you actually want to change that because they're not making any changes whatsoever thus far so it could be something like oh you know I really don't like working with this person but they keep working with this person because they've got a scarcity mindset that they're not going to find someone else to work with them. Um, that goes for like as a client, a VA, I mean, so many different areas. Um, maybe you are going out with somebody that doesn't call you and you always need to call them or vice versa, whatever that looks like. And you're like, it's driving you bonkers that they never call you. Okay. So do you want to keep complaining that they never call you or do you actually want to do something about it? Right. Like, you know, this person, this person has complained to you a lot about the same, same thing. Another crab. That's another crab just pulling you down, pulling you down and weighing you down. So now that you know what these crabs can potentially look like, and I'm sure there's many more ways that they could look. I would actually love to hear that. Go ahead and comment. What does your crab look like? <laughs> um, what do you do? What do you do now? So I guess the first question that you really need to ask yourself is, how much does what they're doing actually bother you? Because if it doesn't bother you at all, then no big deal. Don't change anything. But if it really, really bothers you, then you've got to start to examine, like, what are you going to do about it, right? Could you, like, if you had a boss like mine that held these meetings with zero accountability, but all you really wanted was the accountability, could you find that somewhere else? Could you find that outside of what's being offered to you right now? You know, could you test out your idea anyway? You know, your friend knocked it down. That didn't work the last time. Could you test it anyway? Like, can that still work for you? And then really thinking like, you know, especially with your friends and family who, again, they mean well, right? They really mean well. They're just like scared for you really is what's going on. Like, does their concern really concern you, right? If the answer to these are no, great. Don't worry about it. If you can find that accountability somewhere else, great. Go do that, right? Like if you can run that idea for yourself anyways, go do that. No big deal. But what if what they're doing really drives you nuts and it's really like weighing you down and holding you down? So I would say first figure out if you have to have them in your life. Now I'm not saying go and break up with people or dump people or quit your job or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is how can you start to create a way to not deal with them as often, not have them around as often, you know, like, can you start hanging out with the people that really do lift you up, that really do energize you, that are ready to up level? Because man, like if you want to up level and the people around you don't, that just sucks. That's just like, Oh, pull me down. But if you're around other people that want to up level and want to shoot up, that's amazing. That feels good and you can hang out there, right? So start realizing that we are choosing our people and we are teaching them how to treat us. And so that friend that keeps calling you with all of the complaints, have you ever told them, you know what, I don't really want to hear you complain about this again? I mean, like legit, tell them that because you are setting a boundary for yourself where you don't want to hear that anymore, right? Are you asking for the accountability that you need? Are you telling people no? It's totally okay to do that, right? And so you need to figure out who you want to be around, who you want to hang around, and what you do and do not want to have in your life. And it's a-okay to set these boundaries for yourself. Honestly, people expect it now, right? And so what does that look like for you? Start playing with this. It doesn't mean you have to have all of your boundaries in place in one day. That's not it at all. What you just need to do is like figure them out as they come and then hold them. So really look at who you're hanging around and these people and like, do you want to keep hanging around them? Do they lift you up? And if not, start changing the people that you hang around. That doesn't mean you need to lose the relationship. That just means you don't talk to them as often, right? Like somebody that's a really, really big crabby crab and they've been a crab for, I don't know, two, three decades or however long for you. And you're like, yeah, I'm right. Maybe talk to them once or twice a year, right? They're not going to be the person that you call every day. Um, and then again, you start hanging out with people um, that lift you up. There are classes on, on like moving energy and, and feeling really good and how to feel good about yourself. And here's what's great. Once you start adjusting and changing your energy, 
it's like the crabs go away because they can't be in the same place, right? Their negativity and your positivity, they, they, it collides. And so you may not even have to do a whole heck of a lot of work to get rid of your crabs. They may just drift away, which would be absolutely amazing. Um, and then the last thing I want you to know is that crabs come and go. Um, now saying that out loud, that sounds a little funny, but it's an ebb and a flow, right? And so sometimes someone's going to be a crab and it's just that time in their life. And like a couple months later, a year later, whatever, they're not going to be crabby anymore and they can really support you. I have been a crab. I'm sure at some point you've been a crab, accidentally, unintentionally been someone's crab. And so like, just know that that's not the place that you're in anymore. Cut yourself some slack, forgive yourself for that, let it go. And like, again, just notice, you know, what, what's going on for somebody else when they come and talk to you as well, right? Like, are you being that best friend that projects their fears? Cause if they are clean that up, clean that up for yourself. So you can be a super supportive up leveling friend. So, um, again, I would love to hear what your crabs look like and, um, I, and when I say what they look like, like what was the experience and, and what happened where you're like, oh, yep, that's a crab. Uh, because the more we can point them out, <laughs> the more we can adjust what we do with them and also learn how to be around them because they're out there. Um, we just don't want to be around them all that often, right? All right, so until next week's uh, Magical Monday, Bye and have a good day.